used to crib about the fact that there, nobody in India is doing anything. One point was continue to crib and live with what you have and second was to do something about it and we chose the other route. Motherhood kind of changed my life forever, I would say, right? So that is when, you know, we were looking for chemical-free, safe products for him and we could not find anything here in India. Uh, we were importing the products and after talking to a lot of friends and family around, I realized that this was not just my problem. A lot of other parents were doing exactly the same. And importing products is not actually, you know, convenient. Uh, not just it, requ it requires a lot of money, but it also requires, uh, you know, tracking friends and family, who's going, when are they coming back, which is a hassle, right? And by the time the products used to reach me, it used to uh, have a shelf life of two to three months remaining, right? So more than half the products used to get expired before I could even get a chance to use them. Um, so I think that was the, um, you know, time when things sort of turned around uh, for us. Mama Earth, to be very honest, started as a problem for us that needed solution and we were more oriented towards solving that problem. Uh, we had not thought about the brand or how big we wanted to become. When we started out, you know, we did not have a D2C channel for the first uh, six to eight months uh, of launching ourselves. We were only available on marketplaces. Now, why did we choose marketplaces instead of retail stores at that point of time? We did not, um, you know, nobody wanted to keep us in the physical stores. It's as simple as that. And we realized that, uh, you know, marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart, Nike, you have to list yourself and then all depends on the kind of uh, pull that you get from the consumer. Customer acquisition is not very cheap these days and that's a fact that's a truth you should accept it and now you should figure a way out of solving for that problem right um, but i would also say that bleeding money is not the only way to acquire consumers we realized that content pulls in a lot of people's attention right educating them talking about yourself attracts a lot of consumers and if you're able to present them with certain content which they understand and they relate with they will buy into your proposition when we started out we were baby focused um, you know but what we very strongly did was that we uh, listened to our consumers and that is something that we are particular about even today um, at that point of time, I had personally talked to about 700 moms just, just to understand what were their problems, you know, what are the kind of products that they were looking for, uh, what, is, what is it that they want from the products to deliver that they were not getting from the products that were already available in the market. Um, and with that, with insight is how we launched the first six products in the baby care. We, uh, educated consumers around toxins. We worked with a lot of bloggers and influencers just to, uh, you know, talk to their followers, etc. Put the message out that these are certain ingredients that are there in the products that you guys use every day and must be avoided because some of those were cancer causing. Um, so that worked in our favor. A lot of people did get educated. Uh, second was why should people believe in a brand like us, which was fairly new in the market and started by people who had no experience in product, so to say. Um, you know, we got madesafe.org on board, which is a not-for-profit organization based out of the US. Uh, so what they do is they check each and every ingredient in the product to be safe, not just for human skin or the baby skin, but also for the environment in general. There is no other way but to hire great people. And, and uh, all of this is being managed by some amazing people who are leading all of these brands, all of these initiatives. And, and I don't think there is any other way possible. If you want to grow, um, you know, to a certain scale and size, right, you have to be comfortable in one stepping back. Right, 
um, and letting others take charge and and secondly you have to actually be very comfortable in in going out there and sort of hiring the right people and who you think are smarter than you and uh, and can actually run this better than you and um, and I think we have focused in the last two years completely on getting that organization in place right? and uh, um, I think we are proud of the fact that you know the quality of leaders we've been able to attract and um, and the diversity in that leadership that we have been able to get and and the experience that we have been able to bring on board and is giving us that comfort everything is in safe hands and and also giving us um, more time to focus on horizon 2 horizon 3 kind of initiatives which is what will what do we need to do 12 months down the line to get the growth going right what do we need to do three to five years down the line to get the growth going what kind of innovations should we be looking at right i think like varun said it's very difficult to keep the two things distinctively apart right you're not able to do that and uh, we've come to terms with it and we've started enjoying that as well for that matter right uh, so when i'm at work i try to be at work in work 100% uh, you know, my full attention and focus is at completing the tasks which were the priority tasks for the day so that when I go home, I don't have any burden from here that I take with me, right? So when I'm home, I'm completely devoted to my family. So be it my uh, parents, be it my kids, they have my 100% attention. And then once I've taken care of them, probably put them to bed and then we have some of our time left, you know, probably an hour or so. Uh, that's the time when we either read or we end up discussing work again or checking emails or talking about, you know, like he said, Horizon 2, Horizon 3 uh, project. When Shark Tank happened, I think a couple of weeks earlier, uh, you know, I had just gotten to know that I was expecting a baby again. And when this opportunity came in, I was a little skeptical, you know, like usually you are when you are expecting, you want to, um, you know, have your priorities aligned. And this came in as an additional thing when I was trying to come up with three new brands and trying to, you know, have a baby. <laughs> um, initially, I, uh, you know, I was hesitating from entering the show, but then, um, you know, what got me into the show and say yes to it was the fact that uh, you know, this is also, um, it's taken for granted that if you're pregnant, women would slow down when it comes to their career or would want to take it slow or stuff like that. And um, I looked at it as an, as an opportunity to burst that, burst that myth, right? Um, by taking that opportunity, by saying yes to it, I just wanted to one, send one message out that, you know, life and work can go hand in hand. It is not like you have to give up on something to take your family forward. The two need to go forward together. And if I am pregnant and I'm taking on this uh, additional responsibility, um, a lot of women might get inspired to not give up. And I think that was what got me to say yes to the show. Atomic Habits the blind side calendarize everything not just work but also your personal stuff painting I make that content that I feel at that time and that makes me happy if I create content which I have to think about a lot and then post produce and then post it doesn't give me that joy I love glory <laughs> I would say my favorite shark is uh, Namita. She makes delicious food and she has treated us very nicely during the shoots with, with some homemade food. Like and subscribe for more such interesting stories and videos from Entrepreneur India.